Excellent. We'll uh, go ahead and get started right away. Then I, I thought I'd be able to, to hear people, but I guess all the the conversation is going to happen in the um, the chat. Um, hopefully, it's not a problem with my audio here. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Welcome, everybody. Uh, today, this session is about how to set up a Hyperledger Indie network. And it's kind of specific to Hyperledger Indie and very much uh, a niche thing. So the, I appreciate everybody who's able to attend and, and hope I can be of some help. Uh, a lot of the session today will uh, be covering the uh, a lot of the slides today will have links to places where you can get a lot more information because they uh, didn't give me enough time to go into the detail that I had promised in the, uh, the explanation or description of this session. So apologies in advance, but it should be uh, all the information is, is in those documents. So um, my name is Lynn Bendixson. I work for Indicio. They're a, a public benefit corporation. And oh, let me get to the right slide here. Uh, what we do is we help people, um, anyone who wants to get into the decentralized identity space, we provide services that start all the way at the beginning from just consulting on standards, maybe uh, to governance, and then all the way to the, the stuff I'm talking about today. I, for example, last week I gave a training session on exactly what we'll be talking about today is a 12 hour training session where we actually went through, uh, installed the nodes and built a network by the time we were done. So it was a, it was a test network, but it was uh, everything we'll be talking about today. So to begin with, this is a, a slide that talks about the whole picture of what you need to do to create a public utility network. This is from the Utility Foundry Working Group. The link is at the bottom there. We have some uh, uh, there's more details out on that site, but we're not going to talk very much about the first couple of things in here, except that you'll need to do some governance. You see the few things about governance in these first couple of uh, sections here, but most of what we'll talk about is some of the create, a lot of the implement, and some of the maintenance that needs to happen for a, a network uh, once you get it up and going. So that is the the big picture and what we'll be going through. We'll jump right into it here. We're um, in the interest of time. Uh, feel free to put your questions in the Q&A and I'll cover those at the end. So first thing you got to do, you got to find some some organizations and some people. It's best to get some that are, that are committed. Uh, and to start a network, I recommend that you have four organizations or stewards or node operators that are the people that will be creating your genesis nodes. You want these people to be long-term uh, as much as possible because it's uh, uh, difficult to change your genesis files once they're out in public. It's not a, uh, an easy thing to change those. And those original nodes, the four original nodes, are the ones that will go into your genesis file. So the um, the trustees that you get, they need to be people that can respond within 24 hours, for example, to a request to help administer your network. So you want uh, organizations that can um, make sure they are able to fund the node longer term so you, so you don't run into issues down the road. Um, later on, you can add more, right? In these initial node operators, I, I don't like to have a designation that calls them Genesis stewards or anything like that. Call your initial group of people founding stewards or founding node operators if you want to, but uh, the Genesis ones are just the first ones to get in and, and do stuff. There's not really any special designation on the network for them. Once the network is all instantiated, all the nodes look the same to anybody trying to get into it. The um, the last part here, though, uh, it's a pretty good idea if you're doing especially a public network to be to have uh, people from different locations, sorry, organizations from different locations and to do different hosting providers. Uh, if 
all of your people are from uh, using AWS, for example, then that's not as diversified as it should be. If AWS decides that they don't want to uh, allow people to run nodes anymore, then your whole network is gone if everyone's on AWS, for example. So, um, so after you've got the people together, the organizations have all signed up, uh, give them the uh, specifications you know, from your governance of how you want to set up your servers. There are a whole bunch of documents in this technical onboarding documents link that I put here. Uh, all of these documents are uh, open source documents that are available for you to use. One of the documents um, inside of there for, uh, sorry, three or four of the documents in there for helping to set up your server are specifically for different hosting uh, platforms like AWS or Azure or GCP are all in there. And then there's one that's not quite as detailed as those ones for uh, if you want to set it up in your own uh, data center. So the other ones are fairly detailed step-by-step step, and take you through every step of the, the process of um, you know, one by one. It's not very visual. None of the documents I have are very visual. They're all very much word-oriented, text-oriented, um, but that's what we have right now to, to share with everybody. And, and they're pretty detailed, and a, a novice can go in and set up an Azure instance, for example, even if you've never used Azure, um, using the steps that I've done. The, uh, once you've got the initial document set up, then you'll need to use the validator preparation guide to go through and uh, set up the um, ND node on the server, install the software. And uh, two things I suggest on that is uh, make it your own. Take the validation prepara validator preparation guide, uh, change the links and the other things in there that are the, the values of, say, this last thing here, the net network directory name that you've chosen. Um, since all nodes have to have the same, uh, putting that inside of your validator preparation guide is a big help for those that are copying the instruction, I'm sorry, copying the commands from in there into their server as part of the setup. So, and then the other uh, suggestion slash, uh, I guess, thing to note about the validator preparation guide is that it's set up for adding a node to a network. And then off to the side, there are sometimes a comment that says, you don't have to do this if you're setting up a new network. Because, you know, just think about it as you're walking through the guide, it's obvious if you're building a new network that a pool doesn't exist yet, right? You don't have a network that you can connect to a pool on uh, as an example. So there are a few things like that in there just to be aware of so you don't uh, get lost trying to do things that don't exist yet. It'll be taken care of later when you uh, build the Genesis file. And speaking of Genesis file, that's the next step. Well, as you... Have your stewards have finished uh, building their nodes, then they have them fill out all of the information from uh, the output of one of the commands in the spreadsheet. Here's an example spreadsheet that has all the items that are needed in there uh, for you to fill out. Every uh, trustee is uh, needing to add their did and ver key. And I think I forgot to mention three trustees is a good thing to have to start out with here. And we'll talk about why three is a good number, at least three, uh, on a different slide, just a minute here. But you have two different sheets in the spreadsheet, and using those two different sheets, you download uh, C files from that, and, uh, and that you copy those to one of the nodes on your network, and also get the Genesis creation script on that one node, and then one node, creates the Genesis files, and then you copy those Genesis files to the other nodes. Um, all those instructions, all those things I mentioned, plus other instructions, there's about 10 steps or so are in this create Genesis files instruction sheet, and that kind of has pretty good detail in there. Um, that's it for Genesis files. Once those Genesis files are created and copied to all the nodes in the right directories uh, with the right permissions, uh, then we want to do some, you want to get together with all your uh, Genesis stewards and have a meeting. 
So what I usually do is get a, a Zoom chat going where we have everyone together, and then we start checking the configurations. Checking configurations, networking, everything to make sure it's all set up. Um, before you try and start the network, saves a ton of debugging time in the long run. Uh, a detailed check of a, just a couple of config files, uh, networking at 10 minutes or so at the beginning of the meeting, maybe 15, to make sure everyone's on the same page and has the same stuff, uh, saves hours of debugging later. So that's one of the, the big things I would recommend here, is just do that little, couple of little checks, and then once everything looks right on everybody's machine, uh, everyone will run this system control start indie node, and your network is up and running. And once it's up and running, you can run the pseudo validator info on each node to, to see um, whether everyone's connected and working together. And, uh, and I can show you that if we have some more time at the end of the meeting um, and there are, during the question and answer time. OK, once it's up and running, there are a couple of configuration steps that you'll probably want to perform. The first one is the auth rules. The default auth rules that come with the um, Indie node are a little bit weak, even for a test net. So I recommend going through this auth rules walkthrough, looking at what you want your authentication rules to be. Now for those of you who don't know, auth rules are what determines how many signatures each transaction needs to be put onto the network and who can write to the network, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a lot of the auth rules have to do with the administrative tasks, so it's how many trustees are needed to add a, a new steward or to remove a steward or to add a node, et cetera. All those kinds of administrative tasks are, are covered here. And if you're running a public network with uh, trustees from uh, multiple companies, you don't want one trustee to have enough power to, to bring down your whole network, for example. So that's what the auth rules help to do, is set up the a little bit of security there. And then the, this other thing, uh, on, a, on all the public networks I've set up, it's we wanted to have a transaction author agreement. It's kind of a legal thing to help out with uh, covering yourself in case someone writes something bad to your network. And this thing, author agreement is something that uh, you can set up so that everyone, when they write to the network, they have to agree to that before they write it. So, and then this, et cetera, is uh, there are a few other plugins, like tokens and stuff, that you can configure if you would like to at this time. And like again, this is after the network is up and running. Then you go in and run the commands to, to configure uh, a few more things. Um, maintenance is a big deal, so we'll cover this briefly here. Uh, some of the things you'll need to do once you get your four initial guys up and running is to add some new node operators. The validator preparation guide, we talked about customizing for yourself earlier, you can use that and send that to the new stewards. They can use that to set up their nodes. Uh, the validator preparation guide in conjunction with some of the other documents I send about setting up the server beforehand uh, will, will help. And then um, uh, plus a list of your specifications from your governance. It's an important part as well. Upgrades is, uh, it says here that it's automated. The next big upgrade coming up from, uh, it's, it's going to be an upgrade from Ubuntu 16.04 to 20.04. That one we won't be able to automate. That'll be a manual upgrade. Um, and it's coming soon. And so uh, you may, if you're, Thinking about building a network soon here, you may want to wait just a little bit so that everyone doesn't have to do the rip and replace of their server to uh, 20.04. But over time, that, once everyone's on 20.04, uh, most of the upgrades will be automated. And there's a command here that just can give you an idea of what happens to make it automated. And then the, uh, the last thing here is a couple of tools. The Indie Scan tool written by Patrick Stoss was uh, created to help developers see what's exactly on the network. And not just developers, but anybody who wants to see what has been written to one of the networks there. Oh, and these links here are just to the source code for creating this. I don't have links for the examples, but 
uh, you can send me an email and I can give you some examples of these things in practice maybe. And then uh, Indie Node Monitor is a project that uh, being worked on to make uh, node monitoring a little bit easier. There's a couple of different people contributing to that and producing different monitoring situations that you can choose from there. And then the, the self-serve app is one that, that I wrote for Sovereign so that uh, we were getting a lot of uh, emails asking for endorsers on our test nets. Um, the endorsers on the main net, they have to, to pay for Sovereign to, and for Indicio to be able to use it. But endorsers on the test nets are free and we didn't want to, uh, so we made this portal here that makes it so that people can go and add it on their own. So you don't have to wait for it. So this is just a couple of tools there to help you get started. And those are all open source. If you need any more help with stuff, there's a link to the full document of everything that I've talked about here, create a new Indian network. There's a chat channel, Hyperledger Indie Node for most of the stuff I've talked about today. You can ask questions there and um, several people are willing to respond. Um, including some of the people on this call, if I'm not mistaken, Thanks for joining us. And then uh, a little uh, shameless plug here at the end, I guess. We have some training. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a node operator training course and uh, a few other training packages from DCO that, that you can take advantage of to get some more help. And that is all I had time to present today. Um, I'm going to go over to the Q&A part here and see if anyone's asking questions. But feel free to speak up and ask if, if you're able to unmute yourself and if you have any questions. I'm not seeing any questions. I'm going to see if I can. I, I think I mentioned earlier I might show a little bit um, of the, the results of the Get Validator info. I'm still watching the chat in my other screen here. So if you have a question, go ahead and type it in. But really quickly here, the, the results of the command sudo validator info look like this. And as you're setting up a node, the first thing, or a network, the first thing you'll look at is this thing here where it says unreachable hosts. If there's hosts that can't be seen, um, there's either a configuration or a network problem on either those hosts or yourself that make it so that that is unable to happen. And what happens when you're adding a node to a network is that is that you'll communicate with the primary node and start downloading the transactions for your subledgers, right? So, and, but, and to see who, what the primary node is, that's what these little numbers are here. The primary node for this network I'm showing is uh, uphold. And then uh, these other numbers inside the parentheses are gonna be the next ones. If this one, for some reason, isn't able to communicate with it, they switch it around to the, to the next and the next, right? So that's the order in which we'll be changing those on the primary node. But this just prints out from a file. The validator info is inside of a file, and that just prints out from that file. So, uh, and that file is updated every minute. So it doesn't do any good to run this repeatedly. Um, once a minute is all the op more often that it's updated. And you can get more info um, by uh, doing a verbose version of that thing. Let's see. It says in the main chat, monitoring slash auditing tools. I think we just ran out of time. I can show you really quick the monitoring tool that I have. I don't have an auditing tool, but the monitoring tool I wrote looks like this. And you're able to see the admin type information that you're interested in here. There are auditing and other tools available. Thanks everybody for coming. So I see a question in the chat from Shane, if anyone's still around here. Um, is India a private network? I believe that the stuff I've been describing today is how to set it up as a public network. So Hyperledger Indie can be a public network with uh, nodes from around the world included in it. You can set it up to be private, and it's just how, how you want to, to set it up. But most Indie networks that I've worked with are public networks. Awesome. 
Okay, I'm going to close the session and allow you to get off to your next place. Thank you.